scent we talk about, I like two styles of scent. I use liquid and I use stick. We've got them both. The scent I make myself. There's lots of scenting elements in there. And in this DVD, we're going to talk about all those parts and pieces and why they're so important. I incorporate lots of scent into this. I batch it myself. I make them in small batches. We have them bottled. We've also partnered up and we put them into a stick form. We work with Conquest Scents, a great partner of ours. They make our scent liquid into the stick form. I use it in a couple different applications. I like using these to lay scent trails. That, that mist comes off, it's a liquid. The disadvantage is when you're in real wet conditions or in the water, it's gonna dilute really easily. That's when I can use the stick. So there's different applications for both. I've come to realize there's a few things that we have to understand just how the dog's nose works in order to help us along with the process of training. You see, dogs smell differently than we do. We're used to smelling stuff and it's kind of a blend. Where dogs smell separate layers. They smell, their noses are built different than ours. Their brain, the size of their brains that process the scents are built completely different than ours. And a, to a dog, they use their nose comparable to how I would use my eyes. So when I start to realize that, the importance of it, I'm gonna focus on how do I capture that in our training. I'm gonna give you a little visual with the idea of scent because an antler has a ton of scent. And the question comes up oftentimes, you know, do those things really smell? Well, they sure do, but there's a lot of things that smell on them. The bone itself is calcium. That's got scent to it. That'll never go away. But when you start looking at the different parts and pieces of it, there's other scents involved with it as well. At the base here, there's, if you look very closely, there's, there's hair that's found in that kind of wax ring that's found there. This dark spot, that's dried on blood. When a buck rubs its antlers in the fall, it gets bark and different debris and, and dirt that's caked into it. Well, as that stuff decays and ages, that has scent to it as well. All of those are scent clues specific to this antler. But what about the outside influences? Because they're there as well, and it's part of our dog's nose process of finding these things. Well, when you think about it, I did a seminar, and I talked about all these parts and pieces of the scent, and I described it this way. I'm going to try to show it here for you guys. Now, this is just a bucket full of stuff. So here's our antler. But when we dump it out, it just so happens, got parts and pieces going everywhere. So happens that this is stuff that I have in my training bag. Forget about them as training tools, but start, try, start thinking them as scent elements. For instance, outside of the antler stuff that we've already talked about, when a coyote comes up and chews on this, and it happens a lot, look real closely at some of your tips, there's little pinholes in it. That's from a coyote chewing on it. This is nature's original natural dog chew. And so when they start putting their impacts on it, you've got scent, there's saliva. So let's say the pink ball is that. When you've got a squirrel that comes up and chews on it, a mouse that comes on it, you've got scent that way. When, you've taken these, when you take these things and you've got different outside influences of scent, let's say that's blood, let's say this is hair, let's say this happens to be something that it falls into some type of a leaf that's got a specific scent to it, that's there. All these different things and parts and pieces, scent clue, scent clue, scent clue, Scent clue. Say these are all scent clues, which we capture most. I make the scent myself. I use so many elements of scent into it, and then we put it into a stick form as well to help us with our training conditions. Wet conditions, we're going to use the liquid, but it's going to get diluted quickly. We'll put it into the stick. So when we put all those parts and pieces into this, now we're conditioning our dogs to associate all those variables with the idea of there's an object there, and what does the object get them? The object gets them to retrieve. That's the reward. So let's say we've got this bucket full of scent that is the actual shed antler. Now, remember why I said dogs separate by layers? Let's say we take one of those layers out. Let's say a chipmunk didn't chew on it. That scent's gone. Let's say there's no blood on it. Let's say it's laid for a while. The blood is gone. But look at all these other parts and pieces. And our dogs are able to process the scents in layers separately. And these scent clues are still there. Maybe this one's gone but this one's there. The bottom line is when you boil it all down, there's always going to be scents that were in here that will associate back to the shape and the reward for the retrieve. I've had a lot of people ask me about, boy, I'm worried. I'm afraid my dog is smelling me, smelling my hands. They are. There's no getting around it. You, they will. But let's say this is my scent. Let's say this isn't. In training, we got a dog that finds it with your scent in it. In the wild, it won't be. So we took it out. But look at all the other scent that's still there, that's been, that's been trained in to realize that that is 
a shed that is a retrieve. So people ask about the human scent element, and they'll say, well, put gloves on because that'll eliminate it. Well, latex gloves, rubber gloves, I hear that all the time. Have you ever smelled a latex or rubber glove? I can smell it. My dog certainly can smell it. So all you're doing is adding a different scent into the process. I don't worry about that stuff. There's no way you're fooling your dog's nose by putting a pair of gloves on. It's just not gonna happen. So I don't worry about it because just because those parts and pieces may be there during training, in the wild they won't be, that's okay. We've conditioned in the other scents that are gonna allow our dogs to connect to the shape, connect to the idea that there is a retrieve and a reward. So as soon as we start realizing we're not gonna spend a lot of time trying to fool our dog's noses because it's just not gonna happen, instead we spend our time training we're gonna have a lot easier time transferring the training to the field and we'll find a lot more antlers that way.